Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Multifamily Investing Academy's podcast. I am your host, Charles Dobbins, the founder of the Multifamily Investing Academy, the multifamily attorney and the creator of the Multifamily OS system for helping you build your multifamily business. I'm also the co-founder of the Hotel to Apartment Cohort Program, where we take uh, and refurbish old apartment, old hotels that are doing no good to anybody and converting them into apartments, market rate apartments for uh, for the markets that are underserved in this country, which are the uh, the, the lower income people uh, without the use of government funds, uh, doing it all with investors and, uh, very nicely, I might add. So that is uh, who I am and this is our show. And on this week's show, I'm gonna talk to you about an article that came out in The Real Deal and uh, just came out uh, yesterday. Uh, I have to tell you, this Real Deal is doing a bang up job when it comes to uh, reporting on the stuff that's going on in the marketplace. The name of this article is Syndicators Are Sinking, Who Will, Who Will Make It Out Alive? Rookie Mistakes Put Struggling Multifamily Firms in Deeper Holes. And there are a couple of lessons that I'm going to teach you from this article. Let me kind of read to you a little bit of the article so you can get the gist of what's going on. But this is, um, you know, I just put out a, a, a blast to my, my list, uh, basically saying that, um, you know, when's the best time to, uh, to plant a tree 20 years ago? When's the second best time today? Um, 20 years ago, back in uh, 2008, 2009, I Bet you many of you listening will probably think to yourself, boy, I wish I had bought into the real estate market back then when everybody was running out. You've got another opportunity right now, especially in multifamily, because these interest rates are killing these uh, novice syndicators. And I'm telling you, when I was doing that shark pool with Cornelius Cannon, and I was looking at some of the worst deals I'd ever seen, but they all thought they were the best things since sliced bread. I bet you none of those deals are getting done or surviving right now uh, because of what's going on in the marketplace. They just, they they had no concept of what it was like to actually run a business, a multifamily real estate business. And that's what we're seeing now. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of it. So uh, they start talking about this gentleman uh, by the name of Alan Stalkup. I don't know who Alan is. Um, several other names in this article are are well known to me and friends of mine, and they've been on my podcast. Um, so it, it's really, it's, I feel bad for these people. I mean, I, I don't want to see anything bad to happen to anyone. Um, and some of these are our friends and it's, it's, I feel sad for them. Uh, but man, I, even I saw this coming. So, uh, let me, uh, Alan Stalkup, uh, he's a syndicator who left a career in golf marketing to launch GVA real estate, uh, in 2015. Okay. So he got in at a good time, but the problem was he got in, he, he didn't have the experience that, that many of us did back in 2008, 2009 to know uh, how bad it can be. Uh, he got in when everything was going up. Uh, he defaulted on a $56 million mortgage tied to the Solara uh, San Antonio apartment complex. It was the usual script of syndication, pooling equity to buy property, gone wrong. Stelkup had tapped floating rate debt then fallen into delinquency in default under crushing interest rate hikes. Another factor, though, has deepened the hole, swallowing up syndicators like Stalkup. Sol, I'm sorry, Stalkup. I want to make sure I get his name right. The crop of green investors who started syndicating when rates were low lack experience both in years and deal volume, in and they lack experience in negotiating workouts. A lot of people who are in trouble, oh, this, this quote, this quote just got me, and uh, I feel like I've been saying this for years now, but uh, here it is in black and white from uh, Levi Benkert. Levi says, a lot of people who are in trouble on multifamily syndicated, syndicated deals, they were in high school in 2008. This Levi syndicates industrial deals as CEO of Harbor Capital and previously de developed multifamily. They didn't think this could happen. And that's exactly right. And we've seen that quote many times that the people that, that who are having these troubles, they weren't in the business back in 2008. Um, they didn't they thought money would be free forever. And it just, you know, my, my partner, David Peters, had done this study, almost like a hundred year study uh, looking at cap rates and the history of cap rates and how they floated. And they only 
they only deviated by a certain amount over a hundred year period. But recently, the cap rates have gone far outside of that deviation. And that just historically, it has never happened before and it could not uh, con continue happening. And now we're seeing cap rates coming back. Um, insiders, uh, scores of operators fueled by cheap floating rate debt went on buying sprees from late 2020 until March 2022. Oh my gosh, did they ever. That was when the Federal Reserve began pushing borrowed uh, rates, rate borrow, pushing borrowing costs up to tame inflation. I saw the most, re I saw, you know, $400,000 per unit prices in Phoenix. Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. And it was all because the money was free. It could not continue. Uh, many overpaid, failed to complete renovation plans, and haven't been able to raise rents enough to keep pace with operating costs and debt payments. Everyone is facing capital calls, said Zamir Kazi, who owns multifamily firm ZMR Capital and has syndicated some deals. Some $31 billion in collateralized loan obligations, short-term floating rate debt favored by syndicators comes due in the next two years. More than one third are watch list in special servicing or delinquencies. Okay, folks, I'm gonna make a note because I wanna come back to this um, and, and tell you where you can find the opportunities. Um, because it's not gonna be with the special services and I'll explain to you why in just a moment. I love what they say when they're talking about how do they, how do they solve this problem? How do these syndicators solve this problem? I love what this article says next because they are spot on. Ask the industry how to head off distress and the answer is unanimous. Communicate, communicate, communicate. You must inform the lenders and limited partners of your struggles. I've been saying that for years. The reason why we were able to come out of that hellhole back in 2008, we lost properties. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we didn't. Um, but we, we kept our name. And the reason why is because every time our phone rang, I'm talking about my wife and me, every time our phone rang, we answered the phone. If it was an investor, we answered the phone and we told them what was going on. And it was ugly, but we were honest. And that's all you can do. That's all you can do. So folks, if you're in this situation now and you're having trouble sleeping and you're, you're, your mind is elsewhere and you're, you're snapping at your kids because you're watching this whole thing start to cave, there is a light on the other side of the tunnel. All right, there is a light there, but you got to keep your head up and always answer your phone. Simple things. It's not going to be easy. You're going to hate taking those phone calls, but communicate, communicate, communicate. All right, and that's what we're seeing is some of these the, some of the problems as we go deeper into the article. This is a great article, and not only is this a great article, they have another article in here too that um, I I'm not sure I posted uh, or I'll put on my on my blog, but. Um, might be a might be a good cause for another uh, um, might be a good uh, uh, other podcast st story. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, what's it? Actually, no, I'm not going to see. It. Okay, anyway, um, modifying a loan requires a willingness to speak with lenders by phone or in person and to show them a plan to bring the loan above water. They would rather have you approach them earlier than later. That is so true. That is so true. And we were always upfront with our, our lenders, the, the ones that we ended up having to give the properties back. I never forget. It was, um, you know, it was Walker and Dunlop. Uh, that's a, a, a dust lender uh, for Fannie Mae. We had a Fannie Mae loan on a seven and a half million dollar property. And Walker and Dunlop was the dust lender. They were great. They were just absolute class acts. To this day, I think Walker and Dunlop is probably one of the best dust lenders I've ever had to deal with. Um, 
and we, you know, we sat down and, and my wife was a banker, so she knows what it's like. And she sat down and, and, you know, we, the guy at Walker and Dunlop had become friends of ours. And, you know, he said, you know, I really have to tell you, I admire how you handled yourself through this whole process. Uh, you know, other people would have given up a long time ago. And, uh, you know, when we shook hands and parted friends, he said, I'm looking forward to doing business with you again in the future. And so that is how you want to be able to leave it with your lenders. You don't want to go stick your head in the sand. Um, now, bearing bad news, you got to talk to your, your LPs. Keeping limited partners in the loop can be just as critical. All right. And then they talk about my buddy, George Bruce. Now, if you don't know George, he's a really good guy. He was with me on a lot of these calls that, um, uh, these, the, the, um, multifamily shark pool calls. He was one of the sharks. He was such a nice guy. He's telling people these, these are good deals and yeah, it looks like it's going to happen. Well, I'm ripping them apart saying, this is crazy. It'd be nuts to do this deal. Uh, you know, we're just coming about it, about it from a, uh, you know, a, a different point. And I gotta tell you, I really respect George and, uh, you know, value his opinion. And he's giving these people like a, a, a pass on their deal saying that they're good. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, am I missing something? Is this something that I'm not getting? And no, no, I was right. I was right. I stuck to my guns. But when Elevate, a Dallas-based firm run by former contractor Georgia Brew, made capital calls on two Houston properties this year, this year, one of his investors was blindsided. The first-time limited partner who requested anonymity had put $100,000 into the deals. He suspected something was wrong when he hadn't received distributions months after investing. When he asked for an explanation, Elevate's response, they're working diligently to get everything going again. Oh boy, if I had heard that from my sponsor, I'd be shaking. Uh, he said it seemed canned. It wasn't really a reassuring answer, he said. He declined to give more, more money. A brew did not comment on the capital calls. Investors' frustration can also spiral into litigation. You know what? Listen, the guy doesn't have the money to pay the mortgage. He's not, you're not going to find the money to make, make yourself whole with litigation. This is just the nature of this animal. Some syndicators, likely fearing investor pushback, have publicly denied struggles in the face of loan data that shows otherwise. Folks, you know, if uh, they also often say if your baby's ugly, uh, you know, if a guy's baby is ugly, don't tell him his baby's beautiful. He knows he's got an ugly baby. I'm telling you, you know, if, if things aren't going well and the whole world is starting to crash and you're out there saying everything's rosy, that's a red flag. And they, they talk about this one particular uh, syndicator, Zach Hoptonstall co-founder of Phoenix-based syndicator Rise48 Equity, I've heard of them before, um, took to Vimeo this summer to tell investors the firm was not distressed after the real deal reported warnings about its loan. Rise's, Rise48's watch listed debt has since grown to $250 million. Um, that is really where much of this is now in the watch listed debt lists from the uh, CMBOs, uh, uh, CMBSs, I was thinking, CBOs. Uh, the worst thing you can do is to have LPs find out about your distress through other people in the market. It can ruin your reputation. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, so they get back to Stall Cup. Um, he made a stab at transparent, transparency ahead of the San Antonio foreclosure, sending a letter to the second quarter to assuage limited partners' fears after pausing distributions on over 40 properties. Stall Cup said GVA would begin doling out dividends again. If you're feeling uneasy, Please, go for a walk, he wrote, barefoot in the grass or on the beach and force yourself to smile and recount five things you're grateful for. Oh, man, that's not what I want to hear from my investor, from my lead investor, from my GP. Oh, 
Don't tell me to do that. Tell me the truth. Stall Cup's third quarter update, however, was bleak. We are seeing softness in the rental market, he wrote. Property values are 30 to 50% less than when we bought them, and in many cases, not worth the debt. Can I still take that walk in the grass, barefoot, in December, in New Hampshire? That might be less painful than reading his, his notices. So, um... A week after the San Antonio foreclosure, Stall Cup suffered a bigger blow. GVA defaulted on $288 million in debt backed by five apartment buildings in Texas, South Carolina, and Tennessee. They were filed foreclosure, lender filed foreclosure on three of them. So, you know, If you're looking to get in this business, it's the best business in the world to be in. But you got to run it like a business. And uh, I'm going to tell you in just a moment where the next opportunities lie and how to get started. Um, for syndicators such as Stallcop, foreclosures pose a major threat to creditworthiness and give lenders a reason to deny future financing. Rockstar Capital, my buddy Robert Martinez. A syndicator built on the ashes of the great financial crisis, right? He got his start about the same time I got my start. I remember meeting him when he was just getting, uh, you know, geared up. He lost a Houston property in September after defaulting on a $51 million loan. The firm's CEO, self-proclaimed -pro self apartment rock star, Robert Martinez, said he tried to cut a deal with M uh, MF4, I think is the name of the, uh, the lender. Um, but uh, it... Um, didn't work out. They were not going to play with him. And Mar Martinez was not available for comment. And then think multifamily. This one hurts because uh, it's M Mark Kenny. Mark Kenny has on my, been on my podcast. Nicest guy. He's a CPA of Michigan State. Um, but he got caught up in this. He, he also got caught up in it. Let me read the, the, the story here. Think multifamily, an investment firm and education program co-founded by Mark Kenny in 2015, lost a West Texas apartment building in September. A former student of syndication guru Brad Sumrock, Kenny had co-signed the loan with Tracy Hubbard, a finance worker who described himself as, quote, somewhat new in the real estate industry on a 2020 episode of the Think Multifamily podcast. Kenny was not... Okay, this, this gets me. This is where... This is what kills me because... I actually have a client that invested with uh, Brad Sumrock, and he's in the exact same trouble that uh, that this um, Tracy Hubbard uh, found himself in, himself or her, um, uh, in that the guru that they partnered with was not hands-on. Um, and here, some a lot, of, a lot of these people were investing in these deals because they thought the guru was running the show. But it's one of his students was actually running the show. This is the exact same thing that's happened to a student of, of mine right now. And I'm really helping him uh, try to figure out what to do. Because I hate to see anybody, you know, lose their money like I did because somebody else is not doing what they said they would do or, or uh, not running the show. It says, Kenny was not hands-on with any of these deals. And that's why many are now in serious trouble, said a source tracking the firm. Neither sponsor responded to requests for comment. More foreclosures are coming, according to Aaron Jodka, research director for Collier's Capital Markets team. As more properties fall, circling vultures will swoop in to pick up the remains. Private equity firms have spun off new funds juiced by family offices and ultra-high net investors to buy multifamily assets that lenders won't save. And here's... The last line, and this is where the opportunity is. There is a record amount of capital sitting on the sidelines, ready to be deployed, Jodka said. There will be pain in order for someone else's gain. Folks, we've seen it all before, and it's happening again. And these people that started over the last 10 years, and they weren't around for the last crash to see, see what really happens in this business, 
they're the ones who are going to be the ones losing their property along with a lot of a lot of people, a lot of investors who put their money into these syndications. And you've heard me say it before, syndication is a scam. All these people want to do is raise more money, take more acquisition fees, move on to the next deal. Nobody was 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 watching the door. You see, they all sold you a great multiple, like two and a half multiple. To, you know, but the fact of the matter is to get to that number, somebody's going to be on the stick for the next five to seven years. But these guys don't make their money over these next five to seven years. They make their money when the deal closes. That's the transaction fee. That's, and then they're ready to move on to the next one, make the next big transaction fee. This passive investing model was an absolute scam for the true passive investor. They were being taken out to the woodshed. It's unbelievable. So, so let me tell you where the next opportunities are going to lie. If you're just looking to get started in this business and you really want to uh, you know, get started and, and get find the deals, the deals are not going to be in these, these um CMBS special special servicer opportunities. I, you know, I've been looking at those for years, but those are where the big money sitting on the sidelines are going to go in and pick those things up and make millions. Okay. So that is not where a new investor is going to make his money. Where a new investor can get into this business quickly is on the banks and credit unions side. You've got to be start building up a relationship with whoever handles a troubled asset, distressed assets department at your local bank and start talking to them. Listen, I'm looking to buy apartments. If you have any that are that are uh, uh, delinquent, any that, that are coming back to the bank, I want them. Just let me know. I can come in there and I can buy them right away. So that's what you have to do. You have to set up that type of a relationship. Now, we're doing that on, in our uh, firm with all of my students. I'm we have VAs who are calling banks in my clients' markets and building up the database so that my clients can be making the phone calls. I tell you, I give you scripts on what to say with the with the uh, banks, so you can you can get to know these people and let them know that you're the next guy that they should be talking to whenever there's a distressed asset. So I'm telling you that is that it's it's very sad. I saw it coming a mile away. It's unfortunate. Um, but you know, it's it's it has to happen. I uh, I love that story when I was on one of these um, podcasts with uh, with um, Cornelius Cannon, and some young bucks posted one of their properties up there. Was they were talking about how they've stressed the uh, financing that, that we can handle an additional point on the um, an additional point of interest rates. Oh, we're long since past that. And uh, and I listened to him say, and, and, and anything more than that will never happen, will never happen. I told him, I said, hey, when you first got started talking right now, you showed us pictures of your portfolio. Can you put, put the, your portfolio back up there? And he puts the portfolio back up there. I said, let me tell you a story about a property that I once owned, and, and I purchased it two months before Fannie and Freddie filed for bankruptcy. And don't tell me that the interest rates aren't going to go up higher and the cap rates aren't going to rise because they did for me. And as a matter of fact, that picture that you have up on your screen right now used to be my property until I had to give it back to the bank. It was, uh, folks, it's one of those of all the gin joints in all the countries in all the world, you had to walk in a mine type of situations. But that's what happened. It was a classic. It was the best television you know you could ever have. Uh, but that that was um, that was tough. But boy, did I learn my lesson, and I'm teaching it to you now. So that's all the time we have for right now. Thanks for joining us in this week's episode. We're going to be back uh, uh, more often now uh, with multiple shows every week. Uh, so make sure you watch them. Make sure you download them. Make sure you subscribe and like. Uh, smash the like button so that uh, I can start moving up the ranks uh, and get my um, my award winning podcast. Uh, nationally ranked, which is what I'm looking for. I, I love I love talking to you folks. I love doing this. Um, and if you want a complimentary copy of my new book, How to Own a Thousand Apartments in Five Years, just go to multifamilyos.com and uh, give us your email address, your name and email address, and I'll have my team get it out to you. Actually, we're going to need your whole address because i got to mail it to you. Um, and uh, quick reminder again, uh, if you'd like to check out my YouTube channel, you can check it out at www.youtube.com forward slash multifamily investing academy. 
and we do a live YouTube every Thursday at 4 p.m. We have a special guest on this Thursday. I'm sorry, not 4 p.m. It's 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but uh, we will see you there. So everyone take care. And until ne next time, just remember what that famous multifamily real estate guru always says. If you're not making offers, this is nothing more than a very expensive hobby. That's just one of my mantras. I'll give you some more later. And we are out.